Hello, hello everybody. I'm here to list why, well, to list my requirements before to get into the, uh, to move up on the rankings, well, on the all-time great list, because people, I guess, they, they're kind of shocked when I say that I only, well, they're only, they're shocked when I say that I only have Floyd at the cusp of 50, uh, when I, on the all-time great, great list, and I told you guys why. You know, he's doing the same thing. I even had a discussion with this uh, guy named Trusting His Word, his YouTube channel. Uh, well, he has a YouTube channel on YouTube. You guys can go look it up. I might put a description, a uh, uh, link to his page, to his channel on in my description box. He has a lot of good videos on there that you guys can go and watch. But I was telling people why. I was, talk, I was talking to him about this, and I tell people why. You know, why Floyd is not that high on my list and the reason being is because you know he's kind of Floyd's kind of doing this Floyd did the same thing that Adrian Broner is doing right now Adrian Broner uh, remember when he went to 135 he only beat Antonio DiMarco and he beat Gavin Rees that's the only two people he beat then he left that division to go fight a bigger name uh, which was probably Malignaggi okay he had other big name. he had other names in that, in that division but he left those names you know that's the other I can't the four did the four did kind of the same four did did the same thing with his divisions you know and I and I was telling the guy and he was telling and I was talking to trust his word and he was telling me that you know Floyd Mayweather uh that Floyd Mayweather he he had those that he didn't that he well what he, what he was doing was he listened he was only listening big names to me and I'm thinking to myself Okay, just because these guys, those guys that Floyd could have fought weren't big names, it doesn't mean that he couldn't have fought them. Like, same thing with Adrian Boner, right? Look at his, I mean, I'm using Adrian Boner now because Adrian Boner is an easier example for you guys to look at and understand what I'm trying to tell you. Look at, look at 135 right now. You had, he had Richard Abril, the short guy from Africa. I, I, I forgot his name, but he comes onto, he comes into the ring with a line on his head, right? And he... And he and uh, Edge Burner had Ricky Burns, okay. You people can say that Ricky Burns was 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 stuck in Adrian Burner, but there's nothing that nobody has ever been through before. That's never has never had to go through before. Um, Ali had to chase down Sonny Liston to fight him. For maybe they had had to chase down Oscar De, De, De La Hoya. That's nothing to chasing down champions and, and people to fight. There's nothing new about boxing, okay. But Richard Abril gave Brandon Rios problems and etc. So I want to. So I wanted to see Adrian Broner fight those fight those other guys. And what 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 people are basically telling me is that just because those guys aren't big names, Adrian Broner should, shouldn't shouldn't fight them. And I'm thinking to myself, well, how is that great? That's not. If you're gonna if you're gonna skip through divisions like that, you can't be greater than than the other fighters. Because the uh, older fighters, they had to fight. They moved up. They moved up. Let's say when they moved up to 135, they would have to fight everybody. And that's why they're greater than these guys right now. They had to. They had to beat Richard Abril. They had to beat. I mean, because Richard Abril, he was. He's. A, he's a tall boxer. He's not a Pauli Malignaggi. He's. He's a little bit taller than Pauli. So we would have got a chance. Chance, chance to see how Adrian Broner would have did against a tall guy, right? But we didn't get to see that. So the older guys would have had to have fought Richard Abril. Uh, Ricky Burns, you know who else? The the short guy from Africa, Gavin Reeves, Andy Mar Andy Marco, and plus anybody else knew who came up there. That's what Chavez, that's what Marvin Hagler did. That's what all the greats had to do. They had to beat everybody in that division to claim king of that to be the king king of that of that division. For so, uh, Andrew Bonner never never did that. So basically. You know what I'm trying. To, what I'm basically learning from from you guys is that you guys have that our standards are lower. We're okay with Floyd. We're okay with basically. We're okay with with, for example, Alabama, the football team, just playing LSU, Georgia, and Florida, basically, and claiming claiming that they're the best. We don't want to see them play Texas A&M because I remember Texas. Te te I remember Texas a and I thought the I thought the Texas a and M could not beat. Alabama, but Alabama lost to that team. They lost. They lost to Texas A&M. So, basically, what 
you guys are saying is, is that you're okay with just people fight, fighting the, with people just fighting the big names and then leaving. And what I'm trying to tell you is that the greats had, had, had to go through more than that. So you can't put these guys up there near them. The other greats, they had to uh, fight everybody. They had to go through more. Not only that, but they uh, they were they had to be true champions of their division and stay in that division and fight like seven seven guys maybe you know before they before they could move up or claim to be king or do anything else. What Adrian Broner is doing is is not what the Greats have done. Boy Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao got got away with this. They were able to to, to skip through divisions, fight only certain guys, and move up. That's not fair to to the other guys. So. If Mayweather wasn't going to fight Canelo, there's no way he would have ever cracked the top 50 for me. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? He probably would be at the cusp of 50 still because you can't you can't continue doing that. And he's been doing that and people are okay with that and calling me crazy because I'm realizing that he's not doing what the greats are doing. And I, and I just explained to you why that's not as great as they are or, or as great as what they did. So, here it is again. So, here, here, so here we are again. And now you want me now I'm gonna tell you guys what Floyd Mayweather has to do to get to to move up, okay? Once he fights Canelo and beats Canelo, I'll move him up into the early forties. Right? Next he needs to beat Manny Pacquiao. He needs to beat Manny Pacquiao. That fight was too hyped up. That fight was too that's that's a big fight. Manny Pacquiao is still a big name, Manny Pacquiao he just he's, he's still the guy. I still need to see him beat Manny Pacquiao. I don't think he ever went in the face Manny Pacquiao. He needs to get he needs to get, get over that fear, fight the other great, the other the other great of this era, and take him out. Okay, that will bump him up for me to to the early 30, 30s, late twenty late twenties. Okay, somewhere in that range. Okay. After that, he can do whatever he wants to do. Okay, he will have three more fights up after. I believe right after Manny Pac, if, if he beats Canelo and, and Manny Pac after that, he will have three more fights up. In order for him to move up to me, he's gonna have to fight. In order to move up big time, he's gonna have to fight somebody at 160. If he fights someone at 160, the new king, whoever's gonna be, whether it's GGG or it's uh, Sergio Martinez or somebody, I'll bump him up to the early teens. And people may may say, well, Floyd can lose if he goes up to 160. Well, that's the point. You have to be put into a position to lose. You have to do something great. That's what pe pe that's what people of this era don't realize because you're not used to seeing it. People, Ali went into situations where you thought he was crazy and you thought that he was going to lose. Ray Leonard went into situations where you thought that he was crazy and you thought that he was going to lose. Floyd Mayweather has never had that obstacle. He's never gone into a situation where you're like, oh man, this dude's going to lose. And you know, he comes out on top. That's great. Floyd's never had that, so if he goes up to 160 and does that, I gotta bump him up into the into, into the teams. I have to, I have to, okay, I have to. If he beats now, if he stays now, the best option for now, the probably the option he's probably gonna do is stay 154. He's gonna have to do that, one of those two to move up to move up drastically. He can fight at 147 or 140, but that's not that impressive. I can't move him up very much. I can only move him up by a couple of spots, maybe to 20, 20 something, 20 mid 20s or something. But I can't move him up very much. He's going to have to fight somebody at 154 or somebody at 160 in, in order to make, to make a drastic, to make a pretty good move. Okay, like if he fights Austin Trotter at 154, I might, I might have to move him then because he had because because he's beating the top three guys because then he would have had beaten the top three guys at 154. He's, he's that much closer to cleaning it, cleaning out a division. That's my point. He would have fought Canelo, Cotto, and and Austin Trout. That's my point. So I would have to move, move him up again. At that point, he would have two more fights left. So it really is going to depend on what Floyd does. If he says at 154, he's, he's going to move up into the teams. If he if he takes on a, a great challenge, he's going to go up. And it, it depends on just how great the challenges are. You know, if he if he, you know, I don't. That's kind of too far to the future to kind of predict. But you know, if he He's going to have to do something great like that. So, you know, um, if if he he's going to have to fight some great challenges, and 
if he's able to beat all these great challenges, then that's going to determine how far I move him up. But, it, but I mean, if he beats everybody and ends up at 49 and 0, he's probably going to end up in the top, the top 10, according to these standards today. Since he's already done quite, quite a bit. But I mean, it's kind of hard to move him up there, knowing what the other greats had to go through. But you know, according to 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 these standards, he probably will be in the top ten. In the top ten by the time he retires. So um, maybe. Maybe it depends on what he does. If he takes, if he, if he continues to take, to take the the soft road and, and, and go back to 140, 140 and one forty seven, he won't enter into the top ten. But if he continues to take on these great challenges like fighting Canelo Alvarez, fighting Manny Pacquiao, going up to fight at one sixty, cleaning out one hundred fifty four division, things like that. If he does great things that, that where it's in points to where he can lose that, then he will definitely enter into the top ten. But um, at first, 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 I thought it was impossible, but I mean, he can. It just depends on what he does. So that's my video. Uh, that's what I, that's what I have to say about it. That's how he moves up on my ranking list. And uh, let's cool through this. Like, subscribe. I'm out of here. Peace.